Okay, so in the last session, uh, we created this two pivot tables where we had the consumer, corporate, and so on, and we had selected the customer type, okay, and the total values, the total sales, you can say, and based on which we also created a pivot chart, okay. We also had a second uh, pivot table where we had the order date and the state, and based on the states, we also have the total, okay. So if you look at this uh, particular year, okay, it was, if you remember, the year was the order date. We had grouped it into two parts, the quarters, okay, and the year. So if I click on this uh, plus button, I get the quarter details and so on. Okay, so this is what we did last time. I had uh, requested you all to try to find out if uh, we can connect these two charts together somehow or the pivot tables. So that if I do some filtering here, let us say if I go and change something here or might be through some other means if i change it here what happens what is the problem here we go and select only 2015 i click on okay i get only that data okay very less data is there fine so let us try to find out the way how to do that Okay, the best way is instead of uh, using a filter like uh, we had done here, if you remember, we had dropped a filter here. So let us see account manager. I dropped uh, account manager in the filter. And this acts like a filter for this particular pivot table. So if I remove, I want to see only the first three account manager data, I can click on the three records, click on OK. My chart, this chart is changing. There's no change here. Okay. And this pivot table also changes based on the filter. Okay. Now I don't want this. Now I want to remove this. So I'll just remove the filter. Okay. Now instead of using a filter, I'll be using a, a slicer. Okay. There's something in the chat, anything in the chat, nothing. Okay. Okay. Coming back. So what I do whenever I want to add a slicer, first of all, I need to be focused in one of the pivot tables. Okay, go to the analyze menu tab. And here we have the insert slice option. Okay, so if I click on this, I get an option, a dialog window, where I can add multiple slices. Now all these columns are available in my data set, right? Now I do not require all of them. Uh, let us say I require the state. I'll select a customer type and I'll select the account manager. Um, three is more than enough in this case. Okay. If you want, you can select many of them. When I click OK, what happens? Uh, three slices will get added. And you can see I have got now more space. I don't have that uh, pivot table fields and all. I can easily move this to say, so let us move it here. Now, this uh, whole uh, sheet looks very messy. Let us uh, arrange this a bit. <clears throat> I'll just show you how to arrange your data or your sheet so that it looks presentable. Now, first of all, uh, I'll arrange the charts as well and the pivot tables. So let me remove this pivot table from here. So I'll just cut and paste it down somewhere. So I'll cut it. Control X to cut the table or the cells. Let me put it here somewhere. I'll paste it here. Similarly, I'll remove this as well. So control X and I'll come down below here. Let us uh, put it here. Okay, and now uh, let me arrange this two charts. So I'll put this chart here and I'll put it here back here somewhere. Now, this also I can move it. Now, one more thing, uh, you cannot do everything manually, like, you know, changing the size of the chart. Now, the arranging it in a proper order or alignment of a chart and so on. So we can also do some alignments. Now, let us check it out. So I'll select this chart. I want to align these two charts here. So I'll press control and click on this chart. Okay, so what happens? Both the charts are now selected. I can go to format. Okay, under format, uh, you can see we have the alignment option here. 
Okay, so first of all, I cannot do the left align, neither I can do the right align. The best alignment possible here is the top alignment. Okay, because I have already adjusted. Let us see whether it changes. A uh, very slightly, this got changed. I'll just uh, remove this a bit down and put it down. Let us say I put it here. Now I select this one. The one which is currently selected is this chart. Okay. Now I go to format, align, and I say align top. So what happens? It gets aligned as per the last selected chart. Okay. If I have to, you know, align as per this one, then this should be the last selected one. Secondly, I can also, you know, change the height and the width. Let us say the height. You can see this. There are two columns, the size. Okay. So either I can go and directly type the height and the width which I want, or let us say I can also increase it from here. So as soon as I do this, you can see this height is going to increase as per my requirement. So let us go up to say seven or eight. Let us put it eight, eight centimeters. Similarly, I can do for the width. So let me do this. Now this looks uh, much better and uh, comparatively you can see let us see if this is fine okay so what i have done is i have arranged my charts you can see the alignment is also proper now the size everything is uh, you know good enough now i can you know place my filters let us uh, place the filters here the slices sorry so i'll put the slices even this can be, you know, sized. You can change the size. So press Control, say Control, select all the three. Okay, you can go to the option here. Okay, you can adjust the height. Let us say I'll change this to five. Let me type it this time. So I'll change this to five. Uh, the width, uh, I'll keep it five. So height is five, column is five. Then uh, if you want, you can also do the alignments. Let me do the top alignment. Okay, I can also do even spacing. Okay, so where can I get that uh, even distribute horizontally? You can see this one. I can distribute this evenly. Okay, so there's even space between all the three slices. Okay, now uh, I, I, I'm not interested here in this data. Now let us go to the slicer, how the slicer works. Now, because uh, I was in this second pivot table, that is pivot table two, while creating this slicer, what happens is whenever I change, let us say I want to see the record of, see, there's a filter here, so let me remove this. There's a filter here also. Okay, now I want to uh, select only consumer. So what happens? I get only the record of a consumer. If I want to select multiple items, I can press the control key. Let us say I want to get home office as well. So consumer is already selected. By default, I click, uh, press the control key and click on house office, home office. I can also select control and click on this. So I get the records for the three. You can see customer type. What if I want to select in a sequence? Let us say I want uh, to select the record of, uh, say the first uh, account manager. And the last one, top five. So I press shift now, instead of pressing control, I press shift and I select the fifth record. Okay, so what happens? All the records in between get selected. The rest of them are not selected. So this is how I can make use of the slicer and do multiple uh, filtering in a way. Now, what is happening here is uh, when I make the changes uh, using the slicer, okay, only one of the chart is getting, uh, you know, affected okay the chart uh, the second chart remains as it is now if i want to link if i want to link uh, one of the slices which slices i can link that is the customer type let me first clear this i can clear the filter from you now i want to link this customer type to both these charts okay so select the uh, slicer go to the options tab menu okay and under the slicer group, we have uh, an option called report connection. So here we go. This is my report connections. I click on this. Okay. And I get uh, all the pivot charts, which I have. So let me increase the size. Yeah. 
Okay, so these are the number of pivot charts which I have, but uh, I'm more interested in uh, sheet number six, where we have two pivot charts, pivot table one and pivot table two. And, you know, if you look at the names, the default names is not going to be very helpful. And that's why I'll suggest you all to, you know, change the name of your pivot table so that, you know, whenever you are referring, you know, the name of the pivot chart immediately, you know, okay, what type of a data that table is, uh, you know, focusing on or showing. Clear? So in this case, because we know that uh, my first table is uh, pivot table one, I'll just click on this. Okay, so now my slicer, uh, slicer is connected to two pivot tables. So pivot table one and pivot table two, I click on okay. Fine. Now when I click on say one of them, you can see both the records are changing. Let us select a small business and here you can see. Okay, so to connect two different uh, pivot tables or pivot charts, you need to make use of a slicer tool. Okay, the slices are the best options and you can have multiple filterings as well and it's very easy to use. Okay, so you'll find uh, lots of uh, dashboards where they are making use of the slices. Okay, and it's a very useful tool you can say. Clear? So that's all of, on slices. Now coming back to, I, I think I have to show you one small thing regarding the pivot table. So let us click in the pivot table here. Okay. Now, if suppose I want to create a field you know, or pivot field or some calculated field, which is not available in my data set. Okay. I can do that. So I have to click in the pivot table. Okay. So I'm here. I click on analyze. Okay. And under calculations, you can see this, uh, there's a button called fields, items, and sets. So I click on this drop down and select calculated field. Now, as soon as I do that, I get a dialog window, which allows me to create a new field. Okay, and add it to my fields. This is the list of fields which I have. Okay, now in this case, I'll just uh, create a dummy one. So let me delete this and I write, uh, say, dummy. And uh, in the formula, either you can give a formula here or you can give any static value as well. Okay. Uh, in this case, I'll just uh, quickly see some calculated fields which I have. Let us uh, add a the, I'll do one thing. I'll click on uh, the total. I'll take total and I'll add the discount amount so that I know without discount what the value is. So let us change this field without discount. Without this count. Okay, so I want to know without discount what is the amount. So what I can do is I can remove this zero. I select this total field. Okay, minus or uh, plus plus the discount amount. Okay, so I have inserted two different fields and added that up together to create a new calculated field. I click on add okay and here you can see in this list now a new field has been added okay let's click on okay and here we go in this table you'll find that uh, this field without discount has been added if you do not want this you can easily remove it from here okay but it is listed in my pivot tables now because this is one of the fields which i have created Okay, so you can also make uh, use or create your own fields if your data is not there in the data set. You can always come back here and create a field instead of, you know, creating a field in the or uh, making changes in the data set, the table itself. Okay, to remove the fields, you can again go back here, go to this calculated field. Now, this uh, under this list, I have one field here. So, without discount, I can click on this. Either I can modify this formula again if I want to, okay? Or I can delete it. Okay, let us delete this because I don't require this now. So I'll just click on delete to remove this and you can see it is not available anymore. Okay, I click on okay. This field goes out from here. Clear, so this was one of the things which was I think remaining in pivot tables. 
clear so i hope you have understood pivot tables i want you all to you know practice this out because uh, as i always tell you uh, if you practice uh, you'll be perfect in that particular topic if you don't practice you know just uh, listening and going through the video is not going to help you in excel at least okay coming to uh, some other topics uh, especially uh, last time when we jumped into the pivot tables before that you know let us go to one of the sheets here somewhere let us go to the first sheet here or okay let's come here okay now before we actually you know go ahead i would like to show you something because uh, what we did was we converted uh, the range into a table and then we saw how to do filtering and sorting right whereas uh, we can also do uh, filtering we can also do sorting on range data okay like this is my range data it's not a table anymore okay you can see this there's no menu option uh, for especially the menu uh, table tool is not available whereas if i click inside a table you get a uh, additional menu options okay so if i want to sort this one if let us say i want to sort as per the price or the quantity how you do that now click in uh, this particular cell anywhere which you want to sort it out go to your sort and filter option which is under the home tab and we have this sort smallest to largest okay if i click on sort smallest to largest what is going to happen is it going to sort only this particular column or it is going to sort all the records anyone any answer for this uh, if i particular column particular column all the records all the records okay there are two different all answers for this all the records and a particular column okay now all those who said all the columns uh, or all the records are right because in the latest version if you i'll just show you to you if i click on the sort and say smallest to you can see now my items have also changed the price everything has changed now why this is happening is because uh, in all the latest versions even if you do not select all the range data you know it will excel is smart enough to you know understand that it you are sorting the whole range of data so it automatically figures out uh, the first record and the last record the column headings as well okay now this was not possible in older versions so uh, those who are working in say version of uh, say 97 office 97 or word 97 you'll find that you know it is not possible to sort all the data by just uh, uh, clicking in one of the cells and uh, clicking on sort it's not going to happen you need to select all the records and then sort so that was a issue with the older versions but in the new version you'll find that you have to just be in one of the cells let's say this got sorted as per the quantity if i want to sort as per the commission so i need to be just there in the cell click on this and click on sort and you'll find that it got sorted okay similarly here also if i go here i click sort i get this sorted you can also do multiple sortings like on multiple fields for that you need to you know exactly go to your custom sort like last time we saw and as you can see my whole data gets selected okay so it is happening uh, automatically and uh, here you can see we have an option like my data has header we do have headers and then we can select the header on which i want to sort let us say i want to sort as per the item and one more level i'll add next i want to sort as per the price okay and i want smallest to largest i click on okay there's nothing happening because this is uh, there are no multiple items so let me make some small change i'll sort this first i'll move this up first okay so and i'll sort it as per not item but uh, let us say price okay and click on okay fine price is uh, being sorted by values more than once okay so, sorry i have selected price again let's say quantity fine okay so like this you can also sort your range data uh, based on multiple fields or a single field as well okay you need not uh, have a table but as you know table have their own advantages okay now what about filtering 
like even uh, in tables, when we create a table, a range, when we convert it into a table, the filter buttons get added automatically. Okay, can we do filtering here? So I am in one of the cells here. I can click on this sort and filter and just click on this filter option. Okay, so automatically what happens, it in identifies the column headings. And in the columns, you can see this filters have been added. So this drop downs. Okay, now I can make use of this and do the filtering. Say number filters or sorting and so on. Let us do some filtering. So I'll say uh, total greater than, say I want greater than uh, 100. Okay, uh, click on OK. So I get only the records which are greater than 100. Okay, like this, uh, you can do multiple filterings as well. You can click on the surprise number filter. See, this time I'll say equals. Uh, do we have multiple records? We have here 15. So equals 15. And I get record where we have 15. So there are two filters here. You can see this. Yeah. To remove the filtering, you have to just come here. Clear filter from price. Under total, clear filter from total. Okay. I hope uh, you have understood how to do the sorting and the filtering on the range data. Uh, tables are much more easy. Okay. And whenever you want to remove the filters, you can see this uh, filter the bu buttons. You can always go back here and just click on this filter once more. And this drop down buttons are removed. Clear? Okay, this was uh, regarding the yep. sorting and uh, filtering of uh, range data. Now let us uh, go ahead and uh, there are two functions which I would like to show you, which is very helpful. One, uh, that is your find and replace option. So for that, I will go to one of the sheets here. Let us go to orders. Okay. Now in orders, uh, let us say I have uh, to find all the records, records especially which have the year 2013. Okay. And I want to replace that with, uh, let us say we have data up to, let me see this. Uh, we have 2017 up to 2017. So let us uh, change this. You know what I want is I want to find for 2013 and change all that records to 2018. Okay, so I cannot go to each of them and just change the year you know, manually. Okay, the best way is you can uh, go to this find and select option, this button here, and click on this. Now you have multiple options here. You can also use go to go to special. Now go to is going to work especially when you have some names. You know you jump into a particular uh, cell. Now those cells, uh, if like last time, uh, if you remember, uh, I showed you how to give a name to a particular cell or the range of data. And we have already given like we have given uh, say order number, order date, and all that stuff. If you remember state and so on. Okay, we are interested in this uh, find and replace. So first of all, I let me show you find. When I click on find, I'll get a dialog window for find and replace. Okay, and if I want to search for something, let us say I want to search for the word air. Okay, so I R air. Okay, and I click on find all. Either I can click on find next because if I want to move one by one check the data and then make some changes, I can use find next. So if I click on find next, okay, you can see my focus is moving. You can see this is my find next option. Click on again, and it's moving to the data where I have the word air in it. If I say find all, you know, if I click on find all, what happens? I get a information here where all my references are there, where I have this word air in it. So if I want, I can just click on this and it will go there. You can see the focus is moving. Right? Now this one. Let us close this. Or let us go to replace. Okay. Now, if I click on replace, I, I want to change this air. Oh, I don't want to change this one. Let me remove this. And I want to remove, uh, change this 2013. 2013 with 2018. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change this number 2013. Now you have to be very careful if I, I have to change the date here. But what can happen is because I have uh, 
Let us say find next. You can see it is moving now. Okay. So let me close this and do it again. I'll use replace now. Okay. So what's happened? If I click on find and replace, the Vedant has a question. He's raised his hand. Yes, Vedant. Oh, it's by mistake. It was mistake, sir. No, sir. Yeah, it's, it was my yeah. mistake. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. It's okay. Uh, let us come back to this topic. Uh, like I have clicked on find what? I want to find 2013 now because my data has lots of numbers, you know. So by mistake, I might change something in my this field, numerical fields here, the values. If I have a value, let us say I have uh, the total order value as uh, 2013. And 2013 dollars might you know mistake uh, it can happen ki i might change that as well okay so you have to be very careful what you're trying to find and replace okay let us do one small replace right i'm not going to do it all so i can click on this 2013 i can replace it with 2018 either i can say find next and uh, find all and replace it or i can just say say find next or i can click on replace if I click on replace, what happens? You can see this. This has changed now. It's become 2018. Okay. Now my focus comes to the next uh, value, which has 2013 in it. I can click on replace again. Okay. And like this, I can keep, keep on changing one value at a time. Okay. But uh, doing it for thousands of records is uh, very difficult. So what I can do is I can just click on replace all. Okay. So it will give me around... 440 replacements have been done okay so all my records where i had this uh, number has now there's some disturbance okay uh, so what happens 240 replacements have been done okay once i click on this i click on okay and close this you can see this record 2018 okay all this has become 2008 now i don't want this this is by mistake so i can just con put control z or you can undo this so undo replace okay i get this there are two more replacements which i've done fine so this is how you can make use of uh, this uh, find and replace option it's uh, very helpful because you know the data which you get from your you know your boss or your other employees on which you have to work you might find out that you know there are some values which you would like to replace it with something else you know in that case you know this is a very helpful uh, you can see options available under your home tab okay under editing okay coming next uh, uh, let us uh, you know go back to another sheet here i have created one sheet for you all sales dashboard okay now this is my sales dashboard which i want you all to see and uh, i'll show you why we actually require pivot tables you know without pivot tables also i can do many things but it will be more you know complicated i need to remember all the different types of functions and so on to create small small records now in this uh, particular file you know i have created a sales uh, dashboard one more thing i'll do is i'll just uh, go to my view remove the grids okay and keep this because usually you'll find that grids uh, are not there on dashboards this looks much better now in this example uh, i'll show you how to make use of logical functions okay now what are logical functions logical functions usually based on uh, some condition for example now we have already used function like count and uh, sum and so on we have used average as well. Okay. Now, what if based on a particular condition, only then I want to sum it up. For example, now here I have a table which I want to populate this, the number of orders by state. Okay. So I want to find out the total count of orders this particular state has. Okay. Now, there's a condition here. I cannot directly write the count function. Okay. For that, I need to make use of a logical function. And the first logical function that I'll show you today is your count if function. 
Okay, so what I'll do is I'll write a counter function. So I'll write equal to because all your functions uh, usually starts with the equal to sign. And now we have a combination of count if there are two functions which are available. One is your simple count if where we can give only one condition, and the other one is count ifs where we have multiple conditions can be given. Okay, now in this example, I do not require multiple condition, I require a single condition. Okay, so I'm going to make use of this function, count if. Now, what is the range? Range is, uh, I want to find out based on the state, I want to count the number of orders. Okay, now, where are my states now? States are in this orders table. If you remember, in the orders table, we had given a name to that particular range called state. So if I type state here, okay, here we find, this is the name which we had given to the range state. So I have to just select this, okay. If you have not given the name, then what you can do is, you can click the uh, table where I have the state. So I click on this, fine. And I can scroll to the column which I want. Now this is my column, okay. So now I can come here and select all these values like this. Now this becomes more tedious, right? So if I select all this down, up to down, let us, and then just press round bracket and press enter. Okay, to make a few, because I press enter, that's the reason. This is my order. So what happens now, range is coming with the name of the sheet, colon and the range. Okay, but this is too tedious. You know, the best way is to give the name to that particular range and use that name wherever I want it. So in this case, I have this range called tab name state. In this state, I want to compare, you know, compare this state with this value. So I, the criteria is VIC, so A5. Okay, now by default, I'm getting the name of the sheet. Uh, you should not get it. You might get A5 also, even that is fine. Clear? Now, when I give A5, I know that it is going to search for the records, all the records which I have in state with the value which is there in A5. So VIC, only VIC will be counted. Okay, so when I press enter, I get this answer as 285 or 89. Now, let me drag this down. So I'll copy this function and here you can see this. I'm getting the count based on the state. So there are 289 orders for the particular state VIC. Then for NSW, we have 646 and so on. Okay, so based on one condition, I have counted the number of orders. Okay, similarly, here I have number of orders by customer type. Okay, so I can come here, equal to, now let us make use of count if again, count if, this time I have uh, a type, so we have the name called customer type, we have this customer type, okay, comma, and the range is A11, I just give A11 here, I'm just typing it out, press enter and I get the answer.